You know, in algebra, a lot of times, someone hands us a sort of complicated equation, and then we're supposed to somehow solve it. So what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to sort of solve an equation? Well, first of all, what does an equation even look like? An equation basically has the shape of something like this. So let's say 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. So an equation is basically just a whole bunch of symbols where there's an equal sign. That's where the word equation comes from. Some, two things are being equated, basically. Now, what things are being equated? Well, they're actually numbers. So it, this could be like 16 equals 16. That's what it means. If it was 16 equals 15, it wouldn't be a correct or true equation. It would be false. So you can think of these like a balance scale almost, you see? So these things per weigh perfectly the same amount, and they balance perfectly. That's why they're equal. OK, well, if it was 15 equals 15, well, there wouldn't be much talking about it because we'd say, OK, great, 15 equals 15. It's not big news. But unfortunately, see, one of the numbers in this equation has been hidden from sight, and that's the x. You see, the x is actually an unknown or a variable. So I don't know what it is. But I do know that whatever it is, it makes these two things balance out just perfectly. And so the question is, what is, what is the right number to put in here for x? So I mean, if, if x bothers you, by the way, just think about it as a question mark. In fact, I can just put a question mark in there if you want. It's just some mysterious number. You see, I can put a little question mark right there. Bling. Put it in here. Bling. So it's some question mark thing. And this, this notation, of course, just means 4 times the question mark. So 4 times the question mark, and then you subtract 3. That's some number. But then if you take the same question mark, that same mysterious number that no one knows, and multiply it by 2, and then up the ante by adding 5 to that, those two things have to balance out just perfectly. And the question is, what's the question mark? Well, OK, instead of writing question marks, which would look sort of a little funny, people might think we're not very serious people, we use a letter. But a letter just represents some number that is not known as of yet. It's a variable. It's an unknown. OK, now how do we go about actually figuring out what number should be there? Well, we could try trial and error. We could say, like, you know, maybe x equals 1. Well, the way to see that would be to replace all the x's by 1. If I did that, here I'd see 4 times 1, which is just 4, minus 3, which is 1. So on this side, I get 1. If I put a 1 in here, I would see 2 times 1, which would be 2, plus 5 would be 7. So I'd have a 1 and a 7. Equal? No, because the 7 would be much, much heavier. So in fact, um, x can't be 1. x must be something else. OK. Well, you can go through all the numbers, but unfortunately, there are infinitely many numbers, and I don't have that kind of time. So how would you actually figure out what x would work? Well, what you do is you sort of manipulate the equation. You massage the equation. I mean, at the end of the day, what's our fantasy? At the end of the day, we'd love to have something that looks like this. x equals, and then the number. All right, answer. Woohoo. So that's what we'd like. So what I want to do is convert this expression, which has the x's all internodded throughout, to an expression where it's just a clean x on the left, an equal sign, and then a number on the right. So that's the goal. Now, how do you actually achieve that goal? Well, the way you achieve that goal is by just doing some arithmetical steps. That is, you add, subtract, multiply, or divide in order to get the x all by itself on the left. So let's think about that for a second. Well, if I want to get all the x's together, I'd like to take this thing and have it be on the other side. But how can I do that? Well, think of it like a balance scale, right? This equality is like a balance scale. So if whatever you do to one side, you've got to do the same thing to the other side. Otherwise, we'd, we'd lose that balance. So if I want to bring this over to this side, what I would want to do is say, well, let's see, this is actually being added to 5. So if I subtract off the 2x on both sides, then, in fact, I would still balance, and then this would be gone, because 2x minus 2x would be 0. So what I'm going to do is actually subtract off 2x from both sides. Notice that 2x is the same thing as 2x, so I'm not changing anything. The scales remain balanced. But now notice that on this side, I have a 2x minus 2x. That actually is 0. And on this side, and still, still on this side, I have this 0, but this 5 remains. So when I combine, I just have a 5 on this side. That's 0. On this side, what do I have? Well, I have a 4x, and I take away 2x's. That would leave me with 2x's. And this minus 3 would still be there, because I haven't done anything to the 3's. 
Well, this is actually looking pretty good. Unfortunately, what I want is x alone. So it's now this negative 3 that's sort of disturbing. How can I get the negative 3 to disappear? Well, I can't just remove it because that would change the value. So what do I do? Well, I think about a way of removing it in a balanced way. So since I'm subtracting 3, my fantasy would be to add 3. So if I add 3 to this side, that would get rid of it. But to keep these scales balanced, I have to add 3 to the other side. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And what happens? On this side, I still have that 2x. That hasn't gone anywhere. And now I have a minus 3 plus 3, and they add up to give 0. So that's done. And here I have a 5 plus 3, which is 8. So I've taken this original equation, and I just massaged it a little bit, and I got it down to this new equation that's the same, represents the same thing. Now I want x alone, and I see that 2 is multiplying the x. So I want to get rid of that 2. Now maybe a good idea is to subtract 2 from both sides. Well, that'd be a great idea, except the 2 is not hooked up to the x with an addition, but instead of multiplication. And the thing that undoes multiplication is actually division. So instead of subtracting 2 to both sides, I'd want to divide both sides by 2, thus canceling out that multiplying 2 in front. So if I divide both sides by 2, well, a very skewed 2, I admit, but there's a 2 nonetheless, and this side by 2, then on this side, 2 over 2 just cancels out, and I just have 1. So this just gives me an x. And on this side, I have 8 over 2, which gives me a 4. And so I finally see that x would equal 4. And this is another equation, but it's an equation that's very easy to read. It says x equals 4. So that's the mystery. And we can actually go back and replace the x by 4 and make sure this really works. If I put a 4 in here, that would be 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 minus 3 would be 13. So this side, I'm weighing 13. What am I weighing on this side? If I put a 4 in here, I see 2 times 4, which would be 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. Notice they balance out perfectly. If you put any other value in for x, they would not balance out. This is the only number that makes this thing balance out. There's only one answer to this question of what is the x value for this. It turns out the answer is 4. Now, when you look at what we did here, really what you can see is that, in some sense, instead of just thinking about subtracting both sides and adding things to both sides and so forth, you could visualize it, if you wanted to, as sort of just moving terms around. Right? I mean, think about this for a second. I had this 2x here, and my fantasy was to get rid of it and push it onto the other side. But in order for me to move it to the other side, I actually had to change the sign. You see, because I had to subtract it to make sure it goes away. So really what's going on, by the way, like the math part, the math part, is I'm subtracting it from both sides. Here I was adding 3 to both sides. But the non-math part, the non-math part, really you can think about it like this. I just want to take this part here. If you want to take something and bring it to the other side that's being added, all you've got to do is bring it over to the other side but subtract it. You see? If you just think about it that way, if I bring that over and subtract it, there it is, and I subtract it, and then I get this value. Now, what about this? Well, here, I'm subtracting a 3. If I want to bring that to the other side, what I would do is change the sign, so now I'd add it. You see, that's exactly what happened. Oops, let me see if I can cover that up. There you go. See, this goes away, so it's just now the 2x, and here it comes out here and becomes an 8. And then I just divided both sides by the 2 in order to get rid of that, that initial factor there, and I get the answer. So you could actually think about, about solving an equation by moving terms back and forth that are being added or subtracted by doing the opposite. So if it's being added, you subtract it. If it's being subtracted, you add it to the other side. Or if you have a multiple in front, you have to divide both sides by that thing to cancel them out. Just like if you had a division here, you would multiply through by both sides in order to cancel that out. So that's sort of the nuts and bolts of just solving sort of linear equations. You want to find the variable. You want to find the unknown. Don't let that freak you out. Don't let the x freak you out. It's just something we don't know. Let's find it. That's how you find it.